Now, I'm delighted to say I'm finally joined in the studio by John Cleese. We've been tasting this interview without, throughout the show because you are, as I've written down here, a comedy legend. Do you know what? I was looking you up and I was going to call Actually, you... I'm not a legend anymore. I was promoted. I'm a national institution. Are you? In, are you national treasure status? It's Friday. Status? I've got a certificate. Yeah. Why aren't you a sir? Because uh, <laughs> I was going to call you Sir reason. John Cleese. No, they haven't asked me, that's haven't why. They? they should I was asked right. if I wanted to be a peer, member of the House. That was Paddy Ashton, whom really? I adored and ran, you know, ran the Lib Dems for yes. a time. And I was very close with Paddy. And at the end, he wanted, uh, asked me if I wanted to be in the Lords but it, to, to vote, you know yes. what I mean, to represent them. And that meant being in England in the winter. And I'm afraid that's not, not on, you know. So you've been spending summers abroad for of many, course, many years. I I can't stand the winter no, and I get enough. chest infections and feel horrible. Oh, no. So off to the sun. Um, now, I was intrigued in the week to spot you at the High Court because I think you sat in on one of the phone hacking trials. Let uh, me ask you first of all, because I know you've been a fierce critic of the British press. Yes. What do you make of the treatment in the newspapers of Philip Schofield and this whole story, having been also in TV well, for decades? I, I, it seems to me astonishingly trivial. Yes. I mean, there are quite important things going on in the world at the moment, and to concentrate on this, but I always wonder, is it that the right-wing press don't want to have to talk about how awful the government is? Maybe. And so they're looking for any other Although story. Although you say that in the right-wing press, the leader column in the Sunday Telegraph today is absolutely so highly critical of Sunak and Hunt's approach. It's saying that it's about managed declinism. So doesn't the right-wing press what? also... about managed declinism, saying their economic policies are wrong, that they're not yeah. creating enough growth and stimulus, that taxes are too They're high. not right-wing enough because Rishi's moved them slightly to the left. Would you think that's a good or a bad thing? Uh, I think uh, I'm a definitely centre-left. Yes. And I thought that tr uh, Liz Truss's ideas for the economy were a complete disaster, although they appeared to the extreme right wing of the, uh, the Conservative Party, mm. which is how she got into power. But no, I think we need a centrist government and one that is much more competent and not so corrupt, because the one thing that bothers me about this government more than anything else is the degree of corruption. In and my when youth, you say that I would... in relation to Boris Johnson or in relation to covid Contracts, or what do you mean? Well, you name it. I think it's all, all very corrupt and paying off their cronies, you know, and mm. uh, promoting to the House of Lords uh, people who are merely uh, Tory donors. I mean, there should be some merit attached to being in the House of Lords, you know, that you've done something important in government or in trade unions. But isn't that kind of an all-party problem? Tony Blair was accused of cronyism a lot with his oh, on yeah. his list. I, I mean, no, all absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yes, you're absolutely right, it does. And that's what uh, that's the problem with the press. They've been so powerful for so long that they sort of felt that the rules didn't apply to them. So I went along because I wanted to hear what was going on in that particular case. And I saw uh, a very clever barrister called Sherman completely yes. demolish the Daily Mail uh, guy who was in charge of, of finance. Although some of the late entries, some of the witnesses that Hugh Grant and indeed Prince Harry wanted to call to some of the other trials have not been allowed. I mean, do you well, have there, there were two of those and they were very late and they were not allowed on the yeah. grounds that it would take the, take the trial too long. The judge was trying to keep the schedule. Yes. Um, but uh, they, they don't need those anyway. They were just extras. They've got plenty on the mirror and uh, they're going to I think, destroy the mirror, which is, at the top level, a good thing, and I hope they replace them with good people. Um, you talked about the right-wing press, but obviously the mirror is very left-wing, so you said... Say again? You talked about the right-wing press, but, yeah. being, but the, the mirror is obviously very left-wing, so you think yes. that they're also culpable. Well, the, 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 the standard of the morality... You see, I'm old, you know, I'm 83, and I remember what the press was like when I first became well-known in 66. They were a decent bunch. If they made a mistake, they were slightly embarrassed about it. Now they don't give a damn. Mm. They really don't. Do you sympathise with Harry and Meghan, then? Uh, I, have, I do have sympathy for them, yes. I, I, if I had to choose who to have dinner with out of the royal family or ex-royal family, I would choose them, yes. I, you something... wouldn't choose Princess Anne? Oh, yes, she's great. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I forgot. No, that. no. Yeah, I've met her a couple of times. 
on Celebrity Knockout, I think it was. But in Harry and Meghan's case, you'll be familiar as a comedian with the South Park kind of parody of this couple who are trying to be famously private. That's uh, oxymoronic, isn't no, it? No, They're chasing it's... fame while at the same time saying, please don't look at us. Yeah, and the, and the fascinating thing about it is that exhibitionists are always given a lot of media time. I mean, dear old Michael uh, Winner was a great friend of mine. He just loved being in the media. And what was so funny is yeah, they said, yes, yes. You are an exhibitionist. Come along and we'll give you lots of coverage. I think the answer is don't cover exhibitionists. But how can we avoid covering exhibitionists if, for instance, Prince Harry yes. writes a tell-all tome about his nearest and dearest? Oh, I think it creates loads you of have news to, lines. You, but you don't have to be obsessed with them. Just uh, This yeah. weekend they're obsessed with Philip Schofield. And I saw somebody saying just now that they've been accused of males, have been accused of, of not handling something properly, and they were cleared by it. So, which is supposed to be the regulatory body, which is in fact financed by the press. Isn't that nice? The press control body. Well, the Ipso will say... Now, let me just say this. In, in 2021, mm. uh, 971 cases were referred to Ipso, complaints about the press. Yes. Camilla, guess how many they upheld? You tell me. Six. OK. OK. But then Ipso, Six out of 600. So we'll say, John, that the clue is in the name, the Independent Press Standards Organisation. You could also you say that the bigger problem... Are you reading that? No, I'm not reading that. I'm just saying it as a journalist who is aware of the Code of Conduct. And second of all, you could say, actually, compared to the regulated press, it's social media that continues to publish with impunity that yeah. is the bigger problem here, John. I think that is a big problem. And I think the trouble is that the uh, question is, how do you improve the situation. And what I don't understand is why people who post things can't be identified. Yes. Why are they keyboard warriors anonymously yeah. spewing well, out files? It bile? must be very easy to know who they are. Yes. And what, if they were there and were responsible for what they said, they wouldn't be so nasty for a start, because people are only nasty when they can, or really nasty, mm. when they can do it privately without being found out. Now, you've said that you're left-leaning. Why GB News, then, and what are you going to be doing for this channel? What I like about this place is that it is free speech. Yes. Now, the other one, Piers Morgan's one, what's it called? We talk, don't talk, talk about that no, but it's a rival that's, channel. Uh, Whatever, rival. I can't remember I know. the name of it. But that is, uh, <laughs> that's Murdoch. So it's obviously going to be right wing, you know? I mean, when the, the papers, when the Mail, sorry, when the uh, Times was covering <clears throat> the thing in the High Court last week, you know, if you read the headline, they actually said that they'd thrown um, Hugh Grant's case out. A yeah. complete lie. Yeah. Complete and utter lie. If you want the BBC, they said, no, the case is going ahead. Yes. So what I'm worried about is the fact that there's a, all this lying because newspapers now aren't newspapers, they're propaganda sheets. We know exactly how they're going to recommend us to vote at the uh, general election. And uh, I don't think that's a, a very healthy situation because you can't have a proper democracy mm. if there isn't good, clear information out there that you can rely on, and there isn't now. OK. And what kind of programmes are you going to be making for GB News, John? Um, I'm going to make a slightly odd one. Right, good. <laughs> Try to break some of the, the moulds that are around, and I'm going to talk about things that I'm interested to people who I think really know about them. OK. And uh, it's been uh, very interesting, for example, um, I, uh, I've been interviewing people like Tim Rice, yes. and we talked to him about creativity and how he worked um, with Lloyd Webber and with Elton John. That's one side of it. And then yes. we're also doing, dealing, have a program on Woke with people who've written good books about it, who really understand what it's about. Like, Do you do you worry about cancel culture? I mean, I know that some of your own work has been revisited. People saying, well, could 40 Towers be made today? I know you're going to talk to me about the revamp of that show. There's been a story in The Telegraph about the life of Brian. Should the scene where Michael Palin is mm. talking about wanting to be called well, a director... Well, that was unfortunately... That was misreported. I okay. was in Guildford, and what I said to them is that when we had a very successful read-through of the script in New York... The actors, who were people who'd won Tonys and been uh, Tony nominated, so they were experienced, proper, proper actors. They all said to me at the end of the script, which I'm doing for the stage next year, um, they, they all said, it's really funny. And then they said, but you can't do the stuff about Loretta. And I said, people have been laughing about it for 
what is it, 44 years. Yes. Uh, you mean they're not going to come to the theatre because they don't want to laugh at it anymore? It's, it's a bit crazy, you know, but the people are very frightened of the nastiness that can occur. If you look the way that uh, J.K. Rowling's been treated, yes. it's appalling. And it's very strange that on woke is a, is, a, is a very complex thing, and aspects of it are very, very good and helpful. And then there's the other end of it, which is just plain silly, like the... Um, what was that thing the other day? Oxfam issued a pamphlet... Uh, advising their employees how to speak to people. And one of the things was, if you support someone, don't say you stand with them, because that might upset people who are unable to stand. I know. That's <laughs> that that, 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 that individual is rubbish. And the trans activists who preach being kind are, in fact, very nasty. Are you worried about censorship in comedy? I know Ricky Gervais and oh, others yeah, have said a lot about this, that you can't tell certain jokes. That's have right. we got the right to be offended but just allow people to say what they want? Yes. Because, actually, it's a subjective feeling. Well, and also, people can argue um, and discuss. I mean, the way a liberal democracy is supposed to work is if there's an issue, we're supposed to debate it and discuss it and talk about it, and it... Please God, there's some sort of consensus at the end which the government can then act on. Mm. That's how a liberal democracy works. What I don't like about the woke fraternity is they refuse to discuss things. They won't come on my show. We've asked a lot of them, and they won't come on their show, my show. And I'm told it's because if they debate with you, it might suggest there's something on your side that's worth listening to, and they yes. don't want to don't want to deal with that. Final question about Forty Towers. Are you going to have to be careful how you do reboot it? Because people have suggested that Manuel's character, mm -hmm. for instance, might be offensive. Some of the things, <laughs> that, the, some yeah. of the things that the major has said in the past in yeah. the last series. Yeah. And what's your well, response to that? Well, the answer is it's going to be hugely different. And my daughter, who's called Camilla, great name, and I have been working on it for about a week. And all we know is it certainly won't be set in the UK. Right. Probably set somewhere in the sun. Um, not in a big city, but somewhere out in the sun with um, a lot of open air stuff, which you never get in, in faulty tires. But we've only just started to think about it because I've got, I'm working on the stage version of Life of Brian. Yes. We're working on a musical of The Fish Called Wanda. And the other Camilla and I have written a, a very good comedy about Hollywood stereotypes. Great. I mean, um, lookalikes. Yes. Lookalikes. And okay. they're going to be played by the originals. So Arnold Schwarzenegger will play his own lookalike. Nice. So there's, there's plenty going on, and I haven't even thought much about the American version. And is Forty Towers now a blessing or a curse? I mean, everyone will always associate you with Basil and um, all of the joy that that series brings. It's one of my yeah. personal favourites. Is that been a kind of albatross around your neck, or is it no, I been think something it, you're the, still very proud of? No, I think the press tried to make it an albatross. I mean, some of the press were so negative at the idea, I think, can't remember. I think it was The Guardian said it's going to be bloody awful, uh, which is a new form of criticism, which is a critic criticising something before you have the slightest idea what it is. Yes, <laughs> but then you had a less is more approach to it, right? You kept it down to those few episodes. Absolutely, and then it's going to be very, very different, because if it's in the character it'll be a multicultural task, which will be very interesting. And my Camilla will be playing uh, the, the woman who's running the hotel at the time. Brilliant. So uh, there will be nothing visually or in terms of characters that anyone's ever seen before. It'll be a brand new attempt. Now, if you're going to say it won't be as good as the original, uh, I know. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's you no can reason. never surpass the original. I don't what? know, but that's hard. It's maybe be hard to surpass the quality of the original because it's such a favourite of so many people in Britain. Well, that's we right, but there's no attempt to copy it, you see. It's something yes. completely different, and I think it'll be quite funny, probably funnier than some of the stuff out there. So the fact that it won't be as good as Faulty Tires um, doesn't bother me because if we were operating on that principle, I should have done Faulty Tires and then retired. Yes, exactly, and you went yes. on to much bigger and greater things. John, we're going to have to leave it there just for time reasons. I don't want to leave it there. I know. I'm enjoying I, chatting to you. Why don't we just go show? on? No, we let's just have another chat? I've got to, I've got to go. No, no you don't. You don't. To the go on moment. talking, Camilla. I tell you one, <laughs> one more thing I was going to ask you. When do you start? When do, When can we watch you on GB News? Do you have a date? They haven't made up their mind. All right. Because, well, you know what it's Imminent. like there. They've no idea what they're doing. TV people, <laughs> September is what I'm getting in my ear, John. We very much look forward to it. Thank you very uh, much for joining me. Lovely to see you. Give my love to the other Camilla. Free speech, John. Free speech. That's what we need.